This is a practice exercise for page 263 in the book. They have us writing electron configurations for ions. Now when I write an electron configuration for an ion, I like to start by writing the electron configuration for the neutral element. So let's look for the first one. We want to find that element on the periodic table. So here it is, atomic number 31. And I'm going to use that information to write the neutral electron configuration. I'm going to start from the noble gas before it, so that's argon. Now I can write my condensed electron configuration. After argon, I'm in the fourth energy level, so it's going to be argon, 4s2, then moving through the d block, 3d10, ending up with 4p1. Now in order to become a 3 plus ion, it must have lost 3 electrons. So where are those electrons going to come from? Those electrons are going to come from the valence shell or the highest energy level orbitals. So that means one electron is going to be this electron here all the way out in the 4p. The next highest are these two electrons in the 4s. Notice that these are the higher energy levels because their principal quantum number is higher. So the electron configuration for the ion is just going to be argon. 3d10. It's because I lost three electrons, and I lost those three electrons from the highest energy level orbitals. Okay, let's look at the next one. So I'm going to find that one on the periodic table, and that's chromium. Now you should remember that chromium has kind of a strange electron configuration when we write it. It's one of our anomalous electron configurations. So neutral chromium, and I can use again that condensed version. I'm going to start from argon. But chromium is a little different. It only puts one electron in that 4s orbital because it likes to have that 3d shell half filled with five electrons instead of 10. And again, the reason for this, even though chromium is only one, two, three, four spots into the d block, it actually promotes the electron from here over here so that it can have five d electrons and one 4s electron having all half filled orbitals. All right. So again, how did it become three positive? It must have lost three electrons. So where did it lose those electrons from? Well, it lost one electron here, because remember that that's our highest energy level, and it must lose two electrons here for a total of three. So that means that the ion is gonna have a configuration of argon, 3d3 because it lost the 4s electron and it lost two of its 3d electrons. All right, last one we're gonna worry about is bromine. So bromine's down here. Again, I like to write the neutral configuration first. And again, I'm gonna use the condensed form, starting from argon. It's going to be 4s2 all the way through 3d10 and then 4p5. Now, how did it get to be a negative charge? It must have gained one electron. So if I gain an electron, all I need to do is add one more in if I have the space for it, and I do because this 4p orbital can hold up to six, so I'm just going to add one electron there. So this configuration is going to look like argon, 4s2, 3d10, 4p, Six. And if you think about that, that's really the exact same configuration as krypton, because when bromine gained one electron, it really has the same configuration as krypton, because now instead of 35 electrons, it's got 36, so that would be an acceptable way to write the bromine anion electron configuration. So again, anytime you write an electron configuration for an ion, it's best to start from the neutral electron configuration, then determine if you gained or lost electrons and which orbitals those electrons would be put into or taken out of. Remembering that when we take them out, we take them out of the highest energy level orbitals first, and when you put them in, you just put them in if you have space. If you don't have enough space, you need to move up to the next highest energy level.